We're in Windows Server 2016 and we're going to create a stub zone. But why would you want to create a stub zone? A secondary zone is usually good enough for most situations. Well, there's a couple of different reasons why you would want to create a stub zone over a secondary zone, but they're not used nearly as often. So let's say you have a main office and you have a remote office. The main office has a domain controller. The remote office has a server, but it's not a domain controller. It's just a small server and it just runs a plain old Windows server on it as a member server. So the secondary server, what that would do is it would replicate all the Active Directory names to IP addresses from the primary server in the main site to this secondary member server simply by adding the DNS role. Well, sometimes we want to do a stub zone instead of a secondary zone. So what a stub zone does is instead of replicating all of the data, what it does is it stores a small amount of information, which is good for a small server. And what it then does is it looks back to the main server every now and then just to make sure that the records are up to date. And it looks to that information much more often than it does than a secondary server does because the secondary server contains the entire zone whereas the stub server does not. It only caches most recent lookups and then constantly looks for updates back to the main server. So if you have a very slow internet connection and you don't make a lot of changes, then a secondary zone is the way to go. But if you have a decent speed communication between the remote and the main site and you make constant DNS changes, then a stub zone actually is the smarter choice in this case. So let's see how we do that. So our main office, we have DC2, and you can see we have a non-active directory zone that we created in a previous video, which you can check out by going to the playlist. So let's right click on that and go to properties, and let's go to zone transfers. Now we want to be able to allow these zone transfers between these two different sites. So let's go ahead and make sure allow zone transfers is checked and we're going to say only to the following server. Now you can choose to any server, but it's not as secure because any server that requests it will get the information or uh, servers that are listed in the name servers tab. Now again, in this scenario, we're saying that the remote site is not a domain controller, so it's not gonna be listed in the name servers tab. So really our only choice here is to only to the following servers. We'll click edit and we'll put in DC1. I'm sorry, we'll put in the IP address for DC1, which is 192.168.15.238. Now, as I mentioned, we're not choosing a domain controller in our scenario, but in reality, th these are both domain controllers. But that's okay, the procedure is still the same. So let's go ahead and click OK, click Apply, and click OK. So now this particular zone will replicate with DC1. So let's go ahead and create a stub zone on DC1 and make sure that it replicates. So let's go to new zone and we get the new zone wizard. Click next and choose the stub zone option. And let's go ahead and make sure you uncheck Active Directory integrated. Click next and let's choose the zone name. So the zone name we know is called non-adzone.internal. So let's type in non-adzone dot internal and case does not matter. Let's go ahead and click next and now it's it goes ahead and tells us the name of the zone which is great. Let's put in the name of the master primary role holder. So let's put in 192.168.15.239 which is the IP address of DC2. Go ahead and click next and finish. So now AD zone 1 pops up. So there it is. And now what we want to do is take a look at non-adzone.internal. There it is. You can see four records. But in non-adzone.internal, we only see two records. And that's because it doesn't keep a record of the entire zone. So anytime we do any kind of a lookup, it'll hold the record there for a short while in cache. But it won't hold it there forever to save on space. And uh, again, it's very rare that you would need to use a stub zone rather than a secondary zone, but I gave you the scenario in which that would make the most sense. So that's how you create a stub zone in Windows Server 2016 DNS.